Hello there. It's time for Most Things Kenobi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and all things Star Wars. I'm your host, Leanne, and I'm alone this week, but not alone. Lauren is not joining us this week, but that's because we have two very special, amazing guests, my dear friends, Derek and Corey. Welcome to the show. Hello. Oh, thank you. We're so excited to be here. Yes, we are. And the reason why you guys are joining us, not just because you're fabulous and you're my besties, but we just got done being and having a stay on the Galactic Star Cruiser, and we had that three-day experience there, and... That's what this episode is going to be about. We're going to give you the rundown on how we got the room, what we thought of the experience, the hits, the misses, and everything in between. So, before we get into that, how do we all know each other? Why do we love each other? Tell us the ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, you lead because I'm the third one in this group. So. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's true. Derek and I have been friends for like 16 years, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I give yeah. or take. <laughs> but it's, it's been a little bit less than uh, um, 16 years out since we were, I think, since we started working together. Guess who's here? Clarence. Yeah, Clarence. He's the fourth guest of this show, as usual. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, we've been, we know each other, we work together, and we've remained friends this entire time. And we have been on some seriously cool adventures. We've been to Comic-Con for many years together. Yes just Disney all day, every day, whenever we're together. <laughs> it's we been awesome. We stood in 24 hour lines to see Marvel oh. and <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's been so much fun. And Corey, another bestie. I'm just the bitch who makes the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Are we like, no, not- here? Are we? <laughs> you, you're really, you're allowed to do whatever you want on this show. <laughs> <laughs> No, so I met, uh, well, Derek is my now husband, um, but I met him um, almost 11 years ago this uh, this November. So, and obviously I know you, Leanne, through him and it's been... Yeah, we've known each other for, yeah, uh, uh, 10 years, 10, 10 or 9 or 10 years. I don't remember when we first met, but, and we are birthday twins or birthday neighbors. Yes, we are. We are, we're birthday neighbors, yes. Yes. So there's a kindred spirit there for sure. There really is. And not only that, Corey, you actually have your own podcast and you and your other two friends, your your co-hosts, your podcast is called Cinema Podrophy. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So my good friends, uh, Justin and Brian and I have a podcast, as you just said, called Cinema Podrophy, where we review any movie that that we want. And it's just, just we've called it like our, our the new bowling league, right? We're there to have fun. Um, it's nothing serious. It's it's literally just to have fun and and enjoy talking about a movie we watch. That's it. Hey, there's cocktails and a lot of laughs. It's really fun, and it's made me want to watch some of the movies that I haven't seen. So well, good. <laughs> mission well, accomplished. Good. Well, good. <laughs> so the Star Cruiser. It was kind of a crazy experience. I have so many good memories from this with you guys, and we weren't the only ones. We had a group of seven. Greg, Dan, Leslie, Christine, and us three. So shout out to all of them. We had uh, one hell of a good time on Amazing board, time. if you will. <laughs> all big Star Wars fans, and you know we just we loved it. it was, yeah, this was perfect for us. It was, and I went into it spoiler free. I didn't look at anything, or I tried not to. I knew a few things, but not me. <laughs> not you. <laughs> Derek is always prepared. I'm the, I'm the planner, so yes. I have to know everything. <laughs> Although I did a really good job about so any of the show element stuff, like I stayed away from. But when it came to like what tips and things ahead of time would help us out, because you are spending a lot of money on this experience mm-hmm. and you want to get your money's worth. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, make sure that. I had that information and I could, you know, share it with everyone. And I was happy that you all were spoiler free and I could, you know, <laughs> do that for you. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and thank you. And I mean, I think at the end of the day, you sort of were able to live vicariously through us watching yes. our first initial reactions to it. Mm-hmm. And we all had very different reactions throughout the entire three days. <laughs> three days span, we did. Myself included. <laughs> we did. But we'll get, we'll get to that. Um, 
let's talk about how we actually got the room. Well, first of all, we have to thank Christine who traveled with us because she had a travel agent and she's like, why don't you use my travel agent um, to help book this? And oh my God, I'm so glad we did <laughs> because we we booked on the very first day that you could as an annual pass holder or for me and at Corey. Yeah. So um, she was on the phone lines for that long. It was several hour wait, I think. It was. To, to get something booked. But her name is... Joe Vagos. I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Vagos, uh, Vagos, Vagos, tomato, tomato. Uh, yeah, we but, love uh, you. J-O-V-A-G-O-S. And she uh, works for uh, The Magic for Less. So she's awesome. She really helped us out and um, got us everything that we needed uh, to get booked for that uh, Star Cruiser trip. And what I was really impressed with from her from a level of service was she was engaged from the minute we inquired to pretty much the day we boarded the ship. I mean, yep. there was not like, a, okay, cool. I've done my job. Get a life. It was truly, <laughs> you know, engaged from start to finish. Yeah, she was great. And we definitely want to thank her for her work. I mean, that day of the booking, we were all on our group chat, like nervous, like may the force be with us, like, yeah. you know, worrying about it. And then the news came and we got it. And not only that, we got a seat at the captain's table the first night we were there, which was really yes. special. It, it was. really was. Um, so thank you, Joe. And yes, thank, thank you, Christine. Joe. Yes, and Christine. First impressions. We were, we got there. We had stayed on Universal Grounds for the f- two days prior And then we took our cars and went over to where the Star Cruiser is located. And there's a bit of a line outside, but not uncomfortable. You're in the shade. They provide you water. They give you your magic bands. Um, Very nice, comfortable. Yeah, I I would say it was a very seamless check-in process. Um, Very, If you've ever been on a cruise, it's very similar in the sense that your your luggage is sort of tagged and bagged right at the right when you arrive, and you won't see it again until you hit your room. So, which was very nice. Valet, yeah, valet, which is all included, yep. um, and it was really nice to just arrive, have this conversation as far as you know, where's your bags going, X, Y, and Z, get your magic band, and then you're literally ready to experience what is in front of you. Yeah, yeah, and the second they let you in. It's the beginning of your experience. Like there's once you're in, you're in it. And when we say in it, you will become part of the storyline, which unfolds and, and we'll get into that in more detail, but it was really cool. And like Corey said, seamless, just getting there, getting in, taking care of the technical, like baggage, cars, etc. And when she says technical baggage, she means, I mean, I had a Williams Sonoma shopping bag with <laughs> vanilla extract and other things in it. So like literally that was tagged and bagged and arrived in my room on the Star Cruiser. So they really did a great job with that. They, they sure did. And we were allowed to bring liquor and we, we did. We had a toast when we got in the room. Yep. It was great. And I'm going to just mention a quick pro tip for the beginning. If yes. you are going soon or booking and um, when you have your first day, you can check in as early as, well, they say you can check in as early as one, but let me tell you, people are there earlier than that. <laughs> so they were. Um, I, we just took a chance um, and I'm kind of breaking a rule of Comic-Con here where <laughs> don't tell people how early you line up because then people will just keep on lining up earlier. But we, I think we got there um, a little after 1130 and there are yes. already groups in front of us. So, um, and being there early and getting in early is the best thing you can do because it just maximizes your time in yeah. the hotel. Well, I shouldn't call it a hotel. It's just like an experience. Yeah. And I think with that too, that's what allowed our, our luggage to arrive at our room by the time we walked in. I right. mean, we walked in at noon and it was in our room because they had already had a chance to, or we walked in at one, I guess, and we had a chance. It was already there. So, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. And so they do bag check, you know, uh, security, you walk through metal detector, that sort of thing. And then you forget you're even in, like Derek said, not a hotel. It's kind of exactly like you're in a ship. They start you on level six to make you feel like you're down in the ship itself. And then everything that takes place while you're on board and in the experience is like levels five and four. So they give you the impression or like this brain tease of like you're going down further into the ship which i don't even know if we were above ground below ground no idea because all of your windows on board look out at space and yeah that was really cool so you walk into the room and your main window i guess out into the world is literally looking out your ship at the planets i think it was coruscant and chandrilla or chandrilla 
or Shangela. Shangela and croissant. <laughs> Shangela and croissant. It was great. Yes. It's also yeah. drag names. Um, yes. And at this point, I just want to say too, because if anybody's sitting is sitting listening, going, "Oh, that sounds way too claustrophobic for me." One, I can understand, even though I'm not claustrophobic, I can understand. But two, there is something called the climate chamber which is essentially an outdoor space. Um, you can't see anything but the sky, really, um, but it does give you a chance to experience what the climate of Earth would be like. Um, well, not Earth. Or Earth uh, well, no. For, 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 hang on. Let's, let's just not confuse people. Like, it is Earth. You're, like, you're going outside in Florida to experience the, the weather. But Correct. theoretically, per the storyline, you're yeah. experiencing... I think when that what they said, it was, it was supposed to experience the climate of Batu, which you're going to be going you know, yes. onto that planet <laughs> sure. uh, yes. on your second day. So, um, And usually it's pretty hot. Yeah. So there is, there is a chance for you to <laughs> get some air. Suns. There's some chance for you to get some air and see some light if this all sounds a little claustrophobic. Yeah. And it it was modeled in the way of like a meditation garden. Yeah. Um so it was it was peaceful out there. It wasn't just like a porch. You didn't just Correct. walk out onto a deck where like okay, there's the parking lot. It was done well. Yeah, and so. it, it wasn't it wasn't a smoker's lounge either. Like it was no. you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, good point. I never thought of that. <laughs> My first impression was just wow. Once you get done with the check-in process, for lack of a better term, they put you on this pod that is supposed to take you to the ship, but really it's just like a you know in between point where they close you in there. They show a little uh, video of you of your little pod going to the ship itself. Yeah, there's some windows that are there's some slits that are supposed to look like windows that have projections to Leanne's point yeah. that that show it look like you're blasting off into outer space. Right. So it's not just here you are, welcome to the Star Cruiser. It's a whole experience. And when they open the doors, you go into the atrium, which is mind-boggling how well done and how clean and how on point for Star Wars it was. Like, top to bottom. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people saw, like, some of the original promo videos uh, for this experience. And they were, let's say, very underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so they, the, the, the promo, the PR department or uh, whoever you want to say is like trying to like advertise this. They did not do a very good job at the beginning. <laughs> sure. So, um, you know, it was so much more fantastic um, than, you know, what I even expected after seeing some of the videos. It was, it was great. And it's two stories which we weren't allowed to go up into the top story, which makes sense after you go through the entire experience and you see what the grand finale is. But it gave the sense that when the captain came out and um, the other players, the cast members came out, they stood above you and addressed you down in the atrium. And it was, it was wonderful. You could hear them. It gave you clear view no matter where you were in the atrium. Yep. And I think there were about 300, 400 passengers, but it didn't, like we said, it never felt cramped. It never felt overwhelming. None of that. And there was only there was only a handful of times across the span of two days that we were all in that atrium together, and and to her point, we it never felt crowded, so um, which was really great. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's uh, I think the capacity is people were saying like it can be like around a hundred to well, there's a hundred rooms, I believe. So I think you could have up to like maybe 400, 500 as max, but you're mm -hmm. most likely not going to be filling out. You know, not every bed is going to be filled right, in every exactly. room. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about a room because it was amazing. That's when I kind of lost it. <laughs> when we got into the room, I totally geeked out. Derek put on the Star Wars music. It was a whole thing. We did our toast with champagne and it was, it was like real at that well, point. Yeah. Why don't you guys share your room since you had the suite? <laughs> yes. yes. So we had two rooms and Derek and I and Leslie and Christine stayed in the suite, which had like a living area, a, a living room, if you will, a bedroom, a very large bathroom, very, very spacious shower. Yes. And kind of a kitchen. people could have fit in the shower. No. 75 <laughs> the people whole... and two droids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We had a droid in the room. We did. And we'll get to her. But Corey 
and Dan and Greg stayed in the room right next to us. Thank God they put us right next to each other. We booked together yes. under two separate names, but they put our rooms right next to each other. It was perfect. We were kind of really worried was. that might not happen. I think they had like a group code that they can use when you're booking it to know that the, this entire group is together. Yeah. But we wanted to do two suites initially. Um, but uh, then I found out that in this ship, on the ship, there's only four suites total really <laughs> yeah. oh i didn't know that well four of the suites that we were looking for there's two i think of the captain suites with which, which are, are bigger and bigger which almost is kind of like combining a standard room and sure. a, uh, the galaxy sure. suite that we were in um but so very limited availability and so we were just lucky enough to get one um and luckily again the standard stateroom was right next door because we had a party of seven so yeah we wanted a space that we could all hang out um and that living room space in the suite was kind of perfect yeah and we i mean at the end of the day we wouldn't have needed two suites because we were all yeah. either in one or we were out or we were in bed right and right. so for it's the true. other room for the standard room had a standard queen bed i mean i would say it, the configuration was very much of a standard hotel room as far as the layout obviously the finishes and um, you know, interior design of the room was, of course, on point with everything else uh, in the ship. But the really cool feature in that room was there's the queen bed and then sort of a bunk bed style. But think of it as sort of two um, almost sort of enclosed on uh, seven of the eight sides, I guess. Uh, so kind of like mm -hmm. an open box on one end. But it was not um, uh, claustrophobic at all. There was still a lot of room in there, a lot of room to move around. But it had a very cozy feel to it which was really neat yeah and then yeah. they were a lot bigger especially in your standard room when they would videotape it and show it online uh it looked a lot smaller agreed than what it actually was when you were there yeah i mean um, we had two adult people sleeping in there comfortably mm -hmm. plenty of room to move plenty of room to sit up um yeah yeah and the looks of it I mean, I felt like I was in Star Wars and that's what I wanted. And <laughs> even just the door to get in the room is a pocket door that was sort yeah. of a um, door on a ship. You know, it wasn't just oh, a right. standard door. Just everything right. down to, to your point, the finishes down to the door itself was great. Yeah. Yeah. And the lights, the, jeez, uh, even the coffee table was. <laughs> everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just on point. And I will say, I didn't think the beds were that comfortable. I'm not going to praise everything on board. <laughs> you know, we'll get to the hits and misses, but one of the misses for my book is <laughs> nothing was that comfortable. The couch was. Yeah. The couch was very comfortable, spacious again. And let's just point out this. There were plenty of outlets, plenty of charging units. They understood what people needed. And you had to use your phone the entire time you were there because it was, quote, your data pad right. to help you carry out your personal missions while you're on board. And you had to charge your phone pretty often. I mean, if you were on it as much as yeah. we were and there was no lack of like, man, I wish there was another outlet. Why don't they have more outlets? No, you never had to ask for that. That was fine. Agreed. Yeah. And going back to your, your comment about the beds, I, I, it's kind of interesting because, and this is something we really didn't know since we booked this experience before all the information was kind of given to us. Um, the, the galaxy suite set up for beds was a lot more awkward or just, weirdly placed than a standard room would yeah. have been um we had you know four people staying in there and in the galaxy suite you had one pull down bed off off the wall in the living room area and then one in the bedroom and then the queen bed and no bunk beds so yeah. it was kind of like I, and not to say i i can't i was spoiled and i got the the big queen bed <laughs> <laughs> queen the, the, queen. The, the queen got the queen bed. The, the big uh, queen gets the big queen bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say that was comfortable, but um, I, I've, I've heard from everybody else that the others were not quite so much. Yeah, I think they could have done like a pull-out couch in the living room and then the pull-down bed out there to where like you literally have two separate rooms, but otherwise you literally have three people sleeping in one room and one person sleeping in the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's our first impression of the room. What did you think of the mess hall? <laughs> the cafeteria slash dining room slash everything. 
as as the as the foodie on this podcast right now, um, yes. the 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 aesthetic of it all was fantastic. It, it was it was yes. great. It was well executed. The captain's table, the shape, the configuration, the placement, all of that was wonderful. I will say the food was good. I was not blown away by the food. Um, I I was a little shocked at how Asian inspired all of the food was. Um, not mm. that I have anything against that. It just was not, um, I was expecting a little bit more variety and a little bit more out of the box type thinking with what was uh, served. I will say that they did a very good job. The chef did a very good job coming up with ways to make it seem galactic, not anything. They took something as pedestrian as macaroni and cheese and chicken nuggets and turned it into something that was space inspired you know oh my god that sure. was my favorite thing that was really <laughs> yes. good that was no, really really good <laughs> that sounds so like lame because it's like <laughs> really out of everything it's just the mac and cheese but the mac and cheese i mean i've had a lot of different disney mac and cheese and for yeah. whatever reason this one was so delicious <laughs> yeah no leanne i think you hit i think you hit the head the nail on the head is that it, everything was creatively executed for sure yes for yeah. sure. Like the peanut butter and jelly dessert was like a puff oh, yeah. ball that looked like a mushroom that grew on Felucia. Like it was, they, they kept the theme going no matter yeah. what. Yeah. And I was very happy to see that in, even in space, they had sweet and low. So if you're a coffee <laughs> drinker that wants sweet and low or an iced tea drinker with sweet and low, they have all that stuff there. Not everything is very strange. There's very, you know, Coca-Cola products. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Which I spilled coffee all over the, I was that person. But I was happy to see that the next day, someone else was that person. <laughs> listen, listen. The ship hit some turbulence, and what are you going to do? <laughs> right? did. they, they didn't have the travelers, the turvises in in, uh, in outer space. You're a good girl. No, and yeah. they didn't have a droid cleaning it up. It was a nice person who I apologized to profusely. So, <laughs> <laughs> The food, I'd have to agree with Corey uh, generally, is that I wasn't really blown away by it. It was good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and actually, out of, in my personal opinion the best meal of the day was lunch for both days. I think that's yes, I where agree. I, I think that's where the best food was. Um, and uh, the dinners were a little bit more awkward because we had seven people. And um, so they oh, were yeah. coming out with our orders for like, that was, you know, it's supposed to be shared family, but style. family style, but these family style, meals should be like shared between really two people because yeah. they were like giving the same amount to like the other couples that were at our captain's yeah. table yeah. and now here so you get two people are sharing one two people are sharing one and then they weren't going to bring out a third yeah it, and it, it was like but then three people are sharing yeah. so it's like people didn't get right. equal amounts of food no that's a that's a really good point and, and i think that's and i think they would have had we made a big enough stink about it but it we should have never had to do that. It should have just been a standard, to your point, if it's two people, they get one. If it's three people, they get two because there needs to be enough. And and correct. And it just it just almost seemed like when we asked for another one, it almost seemed like the, well, we don't normally do that, but we'll go ahead and do right. it. Which you, is right? very unlike a cruise. Like yeah. on a Disney. For an inclusive experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like if you go on a Disney cruise, I'm sure any cruise, but I, I have a lot of experience on Disney cruises. And they're like, they're just coming out with more food that you didn't even ask for. They're like, oh, try this, try that. And yeah. so it seemed very weird that it was like almost kind of hard to get more yeah. food from them for the dinners anyways. Yeah, it was nice. For the dinners, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like a traditional full table service, but I didn't mind the family style because it truly, everything was kind of there at once. You could pick and choose as you wanted. Um, if you wanted more of something, then great. If not, then so be it. Um, I want I want to take a quick step back though too. I loved the trays that they used for the breakfast and lunch service same, because same it was though. a way it was a way to make it fun, but also have some level of portion control. Because sometimes, let's be honest, in America, when you see a buffet, people load oh, load and overload their tray. And what was neat about these trays was they were sort of like a bento box style. Mm -hmm with um, these sort of uh, defined compartments to where um, what you were getting was was different shapes, but they all fit on the tray. So you could do two small squares or one long rectangle and it would all fit in the same space. But it was very well uh, executed and very fun. Yeah. 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 And for 
uh, we, you know, for the captain's table, we actually got to speak to the captain who was a Pantoran female. She was great. She knew her shit. I was grilling her a little bit. Not, not, not like grilling her aggressively, but like yes, conversationally. And she knew for all the Star Wars fans out there, she knew who Rio Chuchi was. Okay. So that's like, that's like test exam. Number one, she passed. Um, <laughs> number two, she had background stories about her father. She had, you know, all of these things that added to her being a true character in the story. Yeah. And her execution was flawless. Yeah. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say. She did it. It wasn't like a script. It was just part of her dialogue. And it made it feel like we were actually speaking to the captain of a ship who's been flying it. She knew Leia Organa, you know, she knew this and that and how she came up in the ranks. And that's how she became the, the captain of this ship. And it gave some authenticity to it, which was really cool for a nerd like myself. So well, well, <laughs> just someone who isn't right. I mean, and, and, and I, you know, I'm out of this group, one of the fewer people that um, I don't dislike star Wars, but I'm not the true fan, right. I can enjoy Derek it for what and it I is. Are. I can enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> Derek, there's different levels too, because sure. you know, I, I know the movies and you know, much more beyond that. Everything. So <laughs> yeah, like pretty much everything. <laughs> well, now, if Lauren was here, I know less than Lauren. So, she's <laughs> so like, we got all these okay. levels of Star Wars knowledge. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, we had all kinds in our group, like you said, Corey. And, and yeah. what would you say you felt about, you know, the characters and, and the story that played out? Oh, well, I, I mean, I just think everybody was so well executed and spoke with confidence. And it wasn't, to me, it was so believable. I literally felt like I was watching the movie and they just plucked these folks out and plopped them into the Star Cruiser. It didn't yes. feel like these actors trying to make it big or like overacting and being ridiculous. Like it truly just felt genuine, authentic, um, and sincere. And, and everybody had such a, uh, a an air of confidence in what they were doing and who they were. Yeah. Well, speaking of confidence, let's give some props to Gaia, oh. our resident Twi'lek performer. So she good. was amazing. She was fantastic. Yeah. And not only that, but we got her almost to break character, Corey. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's the best at getting <laughs> those he really actors is. and actresses to break character. Because, and yeah. here's the thing, here's the thing. I, I, it's not like a game that I'm like trying to do, but the reality is, is that like, I know I can do it to some degree. So like, why not? Right. And so can I, can I move ahead to tell what my, what my outfit was and what, how Please this all do. happened? Yeah, okay. So we were all dressed. And I, of course, those who follow most things Kenobi on Twitter and on Instagram, some of my outfits were revealed, but I haven't, I haven't shared your pictures yet. Sure. Sure. No, and you so, please feel free oh, yes, to. Please, please feel, feel free. free. Okay. All right. So, so, um, so going back to the point that I was not the, the true fan on this is I wasn't trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I also wasn't going to go out and like spend all this money on, on, on apparel that I'm likely to never wear again, X, Y, and Z. Well, come to find out that everyone else in our group was going out and being a participant. And I was like, well, I I'm happy to do so. I just wasn't originally planning to, cause I didn't expect everyone in our group to do so. So anyway, fast forward. Um, I know there's a captain's dinner and I already had um, some, some ideas. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I had, I have a pair of gold, like sort of glittery stilettos that actually fit um, from a, from a previous, a previous cruise. I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and anyway, so I had put this look together, black jeans, this black sort of flowy kind of shirt, these heels, black sunglasses, nails, gold and, and nude, nails and anyway long story short that's what i wore to the captain's dinner gaia had you know been around me and um you know we had, we had made eyes and and whatnot and then the next night um we had actually had a moment to chat with her in the the, the lounge the star lounge i think it was and i said she said something and i was like oh do you remember seeing me she goes oh i remember seeing you the nails the the, the heels, um, the heels all of it. She goes, I remember a look or something like that. And I said, well, you know, I said, it, it's because it's intergalactic. And the minute I said that, she laughed like, yeah. like nodded her head. I was like, I, she didn't say I got to go, but she dismissed herself very quickly. Like, <laughs> so, anyway, that was, that was the moment that, that I, you know, got her to break a little bit. Yeah, she, she was, you know, the, the great part about this is that they don't just perform and then you don't see them again. They come yes. around, they talk yes. to you, they're part mm -hmm. of the storyline. And they're not imposing at all. 
the captain was very approachable. She told us a poem at the at the Star Lounge and it was I recorded it. It was amazing. It was like heartfelt and about, you know, new paths and sh- they taught us Tabuite, which is like cheers basically. And, and, and they then there's the other phrases. one um something Adiga. Co- uh, Chocola, Adiga, Adiga, Chocola. Oh, see, now we don't know. What? Well, co- I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. pause, pause, pause. I know Cola is in there because that's the point I remember. Anyway, so while, while she's looking it up, um, no, but to, but to, <laughs> but, well, I was going to say, you know, speaking of people being in character, it's not just the actors that are, you know, central to the role of the story on the Star Cruiser, the waiters. Everybody. The bartenders, the people the with the people at the um, the dustpans. Oh yeah, everybody! Everybody <laughs> is playing the story, and Truly. they're all characters. And in the in the sense of that, they're all going along with this story to make you feel as immersed yes. as possible. Yes, yes, yeah. And and not only that, but we had a few interruptions at dinner from the first order. Mm-hmm. And the waiters and waitresses were like, "Don't worry, the the security and safety of the cab, you know, of the of the cabin here is is our top priority. And I'm sure the first order won't cause any more issues. And, you know, they it just like little things like that that kept the story going. And let me just say, quite possibly, my favorite actor or cast member on this ship was Lieutenant Croy, the main bad guy, if you yes, will, yes. who wasn't or- a bad guy at all. He was a good guy, <laughs> but he was." <laughs> Or Lieutenant Lacroix for our sparkling water fans out there. Yeah, yeah. We, we may have called him Lacroix once or twice. But <laughs> <laughs> I have the phrase right now. Hang on, it's uh, Atima Yakola. Atima Yakola. Told you, Cola was in there. Yeah. Okay. There we Atima go. Yakola. What well, was that? Something about the the huts. The yes. huts said that. Yes. The huts said that. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of funny that they brought up Hatties on the ship. Who the fuck? Like, why? <laughs> Atima Yakola. We're going to have any of these huts in here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. So, speaking of waiters and waitresses, we loved ours at the cantina. She was amazing. What was her name? You actually got her number, Corey. Oh, like, the Skelet Lounge? Yeah, well. Yeah, the lounge. Well, that one. I didn't get her number. I got this second one's number. But, but no, you know, but so so I want to I bring something else that we said back to this moment is... While we had all these folks on board, beyond being in the atrium combined at certain moments, there wasn't ever really another time that it felt busy. And I'm saying that in the sense that any time that our party of seven walked into the sublight lounge, we had a spot to sit all seven. We didn't have to wait. It wasn't packed. It wasn't, I mean, and there was people in there, don't get me wrong, but but that's just how much space there was for everybody to move around and be be doing kind of their own thing. And so... Anyway, but Crystal was the one that yes. um, we had bonded Shout with. Crystal. Shout out to Crystal. Shout out to Crystal. Because she was the other her. one that I, that I made break character. <laughs> yeah, she was, listen, the she was amazing. The drinks were amazing. I mean, they even, they were all about, based by planets, you know, named yeah. after planets. Um, they kept in theme. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's like our dinner the second night. Each dish represented a planet. And that, that was really cool. So, I mean, yeah. everything top to bottom was pretty on point. Kashyyyk? Yeah. <laughs> Derek Dar- Dar- didn't know how to pronounce Kashyyyk, and he found out that night. <laughs> and Chewie was on board. We helped, quote unquote, rescue him off board as part of the storyline. So back to Chewie. What what no one's saying on here is the fact that Chewie had a Brazilian blowout before he got on the... <laughs> Before he got on the Star Cruiser, because I, he I had not, some flyaway things that were out of control. I don't know that what was, was going fair. on with. <laughs> I told you, with, Brazilian blood, girl, in <laughs> in Batu. Because I'm telling you, I see we see Chewy on Batu, and he does not look like that. So it looked no, like he he, was, he just woke up. Yeah, he woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, he got he got himself ready for this trip. So that's true. <laughs> so yeah, there had, you go. We had stormtroopers. We had Kylo Ren. We had Ray, and we didn't even know that they were on the ship until like the second or third day or whatever. And when our storylines kind of played out and came to the grand finale, that's when it was revealed that they were part of this story. And it it was really interesting because we had seven people all starting off at the same point in the storyline and ending on completely different points. Yeah. yeah. And my take. <laughs> 
I tried to play both sides. I tried to be friendly with the First Order, talk to Lieutenant Croy, kind of get schmoozy with him. And then I would report back to, you know, the captain's helper or first first mate. I don't know what the term is, but I would give her information and then she'd be like, okay, well, come talk to me later. I have information for you to forward this. And then we all had different missions that we had to accomplish when we went to Batu, you know, off planet or off ship, if you will. And that played out. But Derek, Corey, you both had completely different storylines. Yeah. And and one thing I will say for anybody that does plan to go and do this experience is the first thing you need to remember is uh, the more you interact with these characters, the better your experience will most likely be. And you 100%. also, you need you need to be ready to start like right away. <laughs> so we yes. were, we aborted the ship, we were shown our room. And then uh, I think the muster drill that they have is at four. And from that moment, you're starting to talk to some of these people. And then after the fact, you want to, you, you know, you just want to go around and talk to them as much as you can. Um, it, and, and also interact with things like everything that you see that you can possibly interact with, interact with, and it, it will make sense. It will, it will it essentially, I think, I think if I had to say, um, I don't want to say a miss, but like, I think that was probably the hardest part about all of it was getting started because for example, Leslie in our group interacted with something and because she did all of a sudden her data pad started to send her stuff, right? Well, yes. she was like, I got to go. Meanwhile, this, the rest, the, the other six of us are looking at each other like, okay, do we order another drink? Like, you know, and, and going back to what Derek said about interacting, you don't have to interact with other guests. They're not going to no. make your, they're not going to like make your um, experience one way or the other. Like, like the, the, the cast members that are on board are the ones that you, you want to interact with. And so anyway, so, but the point is, if you're if you're hitting a point that you're just not sure how to do or sorry what to do or where to go, just ask. And I mean that in the sense that I literally asked. Um, I needed a password for something and I couldn't figure out. And I literally asked the girl with the dustpan, the, like to help me. And she looked. <laughs> she looked at her. She looked at her friend with the broom. One had the dustpan. One had the broom. And clearly, it's not a two person job, but it is in outer <laughs> space. But. Um, <laughs> But uh, she looked at him. She's like, okay, listen, like, make sure nobody follows us. Like, to Derek's point earlier is that everybody's in it. Like, everybody yeah. plays an integral role. So don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to interact with things and have fun. Yeah. Yes. And when we went to Batu and we went to Oga's Cantina, the bartenders slipped us clues to continue the storyline. So even yeah. the people on Batu serving you at the cantina were in on it. So yeah. it's, and we had pins that said passenger on the Halcyon and we got in the lightning lines for the rides and we were served free alcohol and food and not at the cantina. We had to pay yeah. for that, but like you got one free alcoholic drink or any drink at all and one free meal, you know, at Batu. Yeah. but everyone was in on it and you got to hack into some of the things throughout the park. Um, we didn't go into any other part of Hollywood studios, just Batu, but we had our own entrance into the park and our own way of getting there, which felt also like a ship. So yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Derek, do you want to share, um, uh, are, sorry, are we okay to hop to talk about the Batu piece right now? Oh yeah. What, whatever you want to talk about. Cause I definitely want to get, to what Derek and I experienced at the end of our, st of, well, basically your storyline, Derek, because yes. you just kind of let me piggyback and then the end of your story, Corey. But do you want to share um, what you were impressed with about the transport from the Halcyon to Batu? Yeah, I thought what, that was really interesting. And, you know, I, I, again, I know that people took pictures of it. it, it you're basically getting onto a box truck. <laughs> and yeah. so this box truck is taking you, transporting you to. Hollywood Studios. The interior bed. completely right. looks like a capsule yes. ship. But you have you no walk, idea you're getting into yeah, a box. When truck. you walk on into it, it's seamless. Like you wouldn't yeah. even know that this is a truck that's taking you somewhere. It, you walk in and it looks like a little transport unit that's going to take you. And they have um, uh, some flashing lights uh, through some of the vents uh, that make it look a little bit more, you know, realistic. And they have a droid that's talking to you. You don't see the droid. But you get to hear him on the um, China over the speaker, and he's talking to you on your way to Batu. Yeah, and you know we did our time, did our time at Batu, and had a really good time. Had a few drinks. I mean, it's early, 
you got back onto the Halcyon to continue your storyline and it felt like it was 5 p.m. But you didn't know really what time it was, <laughs> you know, like when you're on board, you kind of forget because your face is either down at your data pad or. It, you well, and, and, you're, and the windows are outer space. So there is no yeah. you don't you're not seeing the sunrise right. and set. You have no idea. Yeah. And as the storyline played out, the first order gradually takes over the ship. Right. Yes. And so the, the second morning when we woke up, there were TIE fighters flying through space outside our ship in our window so you knew something was going on like it, it even that the space out the window kind of progressed along with the story and we did have lightsaber training and we yes had, we did oh baby you did it in heels girl, I did, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah my i told you my look had you know heels for the um the captain's dinner and i didn't look or i didn't know what the agenda looked like um in the sense that it was that tight of a timeline because I was just going to wear that outfit for dinner, come back, change into my other outfit for the rest of the evening. And I told Derek that, and he was like, um, girl, you ain't got time to change. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. so literally I had to go straight to lightsaber training after dinner to where I'm, and there's photos that, and please feel free to share them. Um, I will. <laughs> where I'm in heels with a lightsaber and press on nails. And I told Leanne later, I said, Leia never even did this shit in heels. So like, you nope. know, just, just saying, just saying. It's a galactic first. <laughs> it's a galactic first, yes. Yeah. And I enjoyed lightsaber training. I had it with Derek and uh, Leslie and Christine. We were all part of that group, right? And that was fun. But it was, it was, you got to hear Yoda at the end, right? Mm -hmm. And he speaks to you about the force. And um, it kind of changes the lesson a little bit. But all of the trainers, what were their names? The Jedi? Saja. Or Saja. Saja. Mm hmm they were in on the storyline as well. So yeah. so all the Sajas are kind of like your, are your, I mean, I don't, I don't think that they were Jedis themselves. No, he said they were like uh, Jedi lore studiers. And so they yes. were versed in Je uh, lightsaber training, but they weren't Jedi. They just. Yes. But they are key to getting onto the force path, which is the most difficult one to get. And so your interactions with them are, are important. And so I knew that ahead of time going onto the ship. And so immediately when I saw them, I started talking to them. Well, you ended up on basically the Jedi path. That was where your storyline ended up. Yes and no. Um, I, I just, just by pure chance, I was just talking to, you know, the uh, cruise director and um, uh, the Saja and um, uh, oh god, what was the the smuggler's name? Wraith. Oh, Wraith. Yeah. Yeah. So Wraith, I just happened Wraith, to keep yeah. up. Yeah, I just kept on talking to them and interacting on the app with those characters on the data mm -hmm. pad, and so I continued to be on all three paths, and it was smart enough to know when I had something scheduled for one of those paths to schedule me at another thing uh, for one of the other paths. And it wasn't like, you know, conflicting and it, but it kept him busy. And so I was on three different ones, which I don't know if, if that's the best way to do it, but um, uh, you know, Corey had a very different experience doing just a singular path of yeah. uh, doing the first order. Uh, well, just to say that Dan and Greg, I think they did everything right to get on to the Force Jedi path, and it didn't end up there. So it's no. kind of by chance whether you play it correctly or yeah. not. Yeah. And Corey, you ended up on a totally different path. Yeah. And so so um, one of the pieces of advice that Derek had shared before we had, had boarded was um, <laughs> it's better to take a singular path and run deep with it. Um, instead of trying to spread yourself too thin and engage with everything. So, so I would say another piece of advice is it's okay to say no. Um, and what, so, so point is, is that I wasn't really getting, I, I was interacting, I was getting some hits. Um, and what's really interesting about it is, is, and I want I want to pause for one second because there's going to be folks listening who, who may go one day and who may not, you do not have to interact on the data pad and be a part of this if you don't want I will say that you're, there isn't much else for you to do if you're not going to do that. Um, you true. don't have to be a diehard fan, and you also don't have to do everything they say. The reality is, though, 
this experience is very much you make of it what you want. If you want to be mm-hmm. super involved and say yes to everything, you can, right? With that, um, it was it, Derek's point in that choosing multiple paths, they were smart about scheduling certain things. They were also very smart about not scheduling you or not prompting you during your dinner time, which I loved. Yeah. Everybody was able to sit and enjoy. Nobody was nobody's like, oh, I gotta go. I have this prompt to do. So so well, props to 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 the um folks who executed that. But but yeah, so I I wasn't really getting a lot that I was interested in. And and what's cool is that as the prompts, the prompts or the communications come in, it's very um, yes, I'm in, no, I'm not, or tell me more kind of is is kind of the general, general um I don't know. Um, um, kind of vibe. Vibe. Thank yeah. you for each interaction. But anyway, so finally, um, Lieutenant Croy came onto my um, came onto my pad, and I was like, "All right, well, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and um, fine, yes." And then I just kind of like things were going well, and I had had some good personal interactions with him, and I was like, "You know what?" I was like, "I don't think anyone else in our group is going down the um, the first order path. I'm going to just go down this path." And honestly, I just I followed Derek's advice and went deep with it. And kind of said no to everything else that wasn't first order. And I didn't feel like I didn't have enough to do. I didn't feel like, oh, I should have engaged more. So I had more to do. My, my schedule was still busy. Um, and I it was very fun. Like I told them at the end, like I knew I was on a losing path. Like, of course, the first yeah. order is not going to be the, the you know, the, um, the ones out on top. But right. it was still very fun and engaging. That, that's because they made it that way. It, it yeah. wasn't, uh, right. they were all just... Lieutenant Croy was amazing. He was funny and just yeah. enough of a petty bitch. Yeah, to and, make it believable. And, and while he's and while he's a villain, he was still very approachable. Um, very likable. I mean, it, it, yes. And and I and so so to go kind of back to something that Derek said was you want to interact, and he, and, and it really is true because because I had had some interactions with him. He knew my name, mm-hmm. um, and so there was a moment when we were on the bridge training that he actually called me by name to help interact with something specifically. So um, I would say, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, um, step outside your comfort zone and and it really will or could work to your yeah. advantage. I mean, I consider myself to be kind of, you know, reserved and a little bit more shy when it comes to those kind of things. Um, but, you know, I had heard so many people say that, you know, just step outside your comfort zone and it will it all work out. Yeah. And, um, I'm so glad I did because it was, uh, it was just so great getting to do so many things. And, and, you know, one of the things that is even great is that you don't have to be prompted to be told to be somewhere to, you know, to experience something. If you are just walking around that ship, then you are going to run into something you didn't even think you were going to experience. Right. And and so like I walked out of dinner the first night, I think, and I just happened to see all of these people hiding Chewy as he's walking through the hallway. And I was like, what is this? And so I just went along with it. Me too. I, yeah. And they all turned and said, well, Chewy has a 730 blowout at the salon. <laughs> so we're going like, <laughs> yeah, it was you had to get to it. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool because it was just like, it was, you, you didn't know what surprises were around every corner. And again, you don't need to be invited to that party. If you want to yeah. join that group, go for it. Or, and ask. I mean, th- there was times that I simply, oh, that's what it was. There was a moment with Lieutenant Croy and the captain and they were off to do something. And I just said, can I join you? And they were like, absolutely. Lieutenant Croy was like, absolutely. Like you're loyal. Like, let's go. Right. So Absolutely. Ask, just make yourself um, part of the story. Yeah. What were you going to yeah, say, Lena? I'm sorry. Oh, just I, – I came out – I went down with you to like the fourth or fifth floor and Ray was in the hallway with a coaxium canister. And it's just yeah. like, when did she get here? Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what the hell? Like, all of a sudden, she's just in there and she's talking about, you know – Sammy, one of the players, uh, Chewy. We have to get Chewy. The there was a an astromech droid that what was his name? Sk. Sk. Uh, yeah, I think. Sk. Um. So he's like R two, but it's Sk, and like we had he was part of the story, and it was this whole thing, and you know I just didn't expect to see Ray. Who? Uh, kudos to the the female the the woman who played her because not only did she have that wide eyed like deer in the headlights Ray look to her. Um, she also had the accent. She also had the knowledge and she, 
it was great. She made references to Luke. She made references to, you know, Master Luke and, you know, General Organa. And then, yeah. of course, Derek was kind enough to get me in on the last bit of his story, which was we went into a room. There were three of us, Ray and one of the Sajas. And we all kind of put our hands out, used the Force, and opened a Jedi holocron, which a prism or some kind of, I don't know, like projection? I don't know the technology. I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it is, it's kind of like a projection. It's one of those things that like, you know, that spins really fast that has light on it that can change. And oh, it, yeah. it creates this 3d illusion. Sure. So yeah, that's and it was what Yoda it was. and it was Yoda who spoke to us. So it was, it was, who, who was the three of you? It was the two of you. It was the two of us. And then another person. Um, but I went into my session. We were, I think we might've been the first one, first group, cause they have more of these sure. going in through. It's just not one. Um, and, uh, the effects didn't work. <laughs> Nothing did. Oh no. <laughs> I so didn't know that. I, I knew that things were supposed to happen. I'm like, wait, what's going on? And we're just walking out and I'm like, oh no. And so, um, I had, I was, when I was walking around later on, Christine had gotten, a separate session and she walked out and she was crying because of how amazing it was. And I was like, Christina, I was like, Oh my God, did it work for you? And she's like, yes. And I was like, Oh, and so I was standing right there by the door where the people that were working it. And I was like, Oh, ours didn't work. And I don't know how, I don't know how these people know where you are or what you're doing or what you say, but it almost seemed like they had set something up to get me back into another session because I was up in the atrium and one of the Sajas came around and she remembered my name. She's like, Derek, she's like, you know, I, I want you to experience this again. Or she said it in such a way that it was still part of the experience. Not like, Oh, the effects were down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah no, uh, you know, Ch Chuck's done with the screwdriver yeah. downstairs. You can go. Back <laughs> so when I found that out, I was like, well, I, I was like, you know, I wanted to share it, but I was like, how many people can I get in? And so I, and I was limited on time because she's like, it was basically like in 15 minutes. And I was like, okay. So I talked to some people and they're saying, oh, we, we can't guarantee anything. And so I was like, oh God. So I don't want to like pull everyone aside because I was like, I didn't know that I was going to get people in. And so luckily I was able to get Leanne down there. And Yeah, I, here I come. I had to take a nap because I was going to die. And <laughs> we hadn't slept, uh, you know, whatever. I had to take a damn nap. I had to power down, power back up. And I'm coming down the hallway and Derek's like, you got to come with me right now. And I was like, okay, because that's how things work on this ship, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> and he's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. So don't get too disappointed if it doesn't happen. But I'm going to try and get you into this experience. I said, okay. And then I cried. I mean, yeah. it was, I knew it's fake. It's not real, but it was real enough for me to be like, okay, I'm in Star Wars. It sounded really cool though. Yeah. And so, and there's not a lot of things on this ship that are, because when you think of Disney and think of like, especially if you ride Rise of Resistance and see all these cool things that they do with this ride and cool um, technology that they use and effects, I would say that this is like the main, uh, like cool thing to see, like, like the the main like kind of um, special effect on the the ship. I love that he tells me that now, two weeks later. But anyway, no, go no, ahead. No. <laughs> but, and that's truly, and that's really a lie because the all the things that they did in the final show, which we can get to later, um, it was was amazing. Amazing. I will say that one of the misses, I think, of the experience, and we talked about this while we were there, is that there's only one lounge, there's only one restaurant. There's only one place to escape to, really. I wish there had been maybe just one more. What exactly? Not because it was packed, because it wasn't. It's just... Variety. On your downtime, there's only one place to go, really. Yeah. And yeah. also, I wish there had been more characters, maybe not part of the story, but like have another species walking around. We did have a Rodian walking around, but she was part of the Gaia show as well. But... You know, have a Togruta walking around or another Twi'lek or, you know, any character just like walking around just to talk to. But I can understand why there wasn't because if they're not part of the storyline, then it might distract you from the storyline, which is sure. the main point of being on the ship. Yeah. And, and I don't think, you know, one thing is that 
there are so many things to do yeah. with the storyline as much as you want to. So yeah. you can really be, you can wake up, have your breakfast, start your day, and mm-hmm. um, and you can be busy the entire day getting involved in your storylines. Well, so. and on the inverse of that, I will say a hit and miss, right? Hit, yes. not hit and run. That's a very different thing. Hit and miss. <laughs> um, I'm not doing that here. The hit is the fact that um, everything, all of the missions sort of ceased around, I think, what was it like 11 o'clock? 10, 10, 10 or 11? 10, 10, 10 or 11. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those actors got to go home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if they got to go home, they need rest too. <laughs> they, go home, they, they need to go up to their cabin, aka in yes. their Toyota Corolla, you know, mm-hmm. you know, blowing a red light camera. But, um, but the thing of it is, so that was the hit, is the fact that it was nice that it stopped at some point so you could relax Go to the lounge, enjoy the climate chamber, lay in your bed, whatever you wanted to do. The miss, though, and this is what um, I I think could be an opportunity in the future, is for those folks who who are night owls and who would have been willing to stay up and have their their story continue. I get it that, you know, the actors, the the folks playing these these uh, these roles can't be there longer or whatever. But it would have been nice if there would have been other things to do on the ship, like um, interact with or puzzles or like something mm-hmm. that, that that you could still continue. So like I said, it's kind of a double-edged sword. One, it was nice to have it stop so you could breathe. And then two, it would have been nice if you wanted to, if you wanted that option to continue, that it was there. Right. Yeah. And, you know, to your point, with my story, I never got to see the cargo bay which i think you spent some time in or the engineering room i didn't see either of those i never went in those neither neither oh okay no fair they enough were closed when i tried to go down so it wasn't fair enough. <laughs> like i guess i didn't do that right but i i never got to go in either of those rooms but i never had a I'm mission in either of those rooms yeah me neither so see, I, just, I had I just, one in each yeah and see and that's another thing that i wanted to say is that while the jedi path is um has that nice you know end to it with the holocron i don't i don't know if it would be the most exciting throughout (laughs) because it the i think with the resistance and with uh the first order um and even with the smuggler route um there are a lot more fun activities to do um but i can't say that for sure because i had three going on at once so i was never fully involved with one particular so i don't know how they would have filled my time yeah with each different thing yeah derek's that bitch at the bingo hall with 17 cards in front of her <laughs> you know stamping left to right with the <laughs> trolls true. nails and the lashes and take the train yes that. <laughs> <laughs> <To the club. laughs> no, no no but 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 that's very true i mean and i um and and same thing kind of kind of in the sense of just asking at some point, I was down there by somebody, and I was like, "Hey, can I get in the cargo hold? I need to see what's in there." And they, the guy was like, "Okay, yeah, but don't tell anybody, right?" And so he keyed me in mm-hmm. to do it, right? And then it wasn't until towards the end of the second day that I actually had a mission that directed me there. <laughs> yeah, and we, for the cargo hold, we we didn't have access to it, um, but we were just like kind of like trying to figure it out, and we were standing there, and then all of a sudden the door opens, and there's Gaia coming out, and she's like, "Well, hello." <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in the cargo hold? I know. Yeah, so she was in the cargo. We didn't know it at the time, but she was walking out to go to her first performance for dinner. And so, so as she's walking out and saying goodbye. We're like, oh, we got access to the cargo room. We broke it. <laughs> but, but, but that's the thing. Like, it's very clear the spaces you're allowed to be in aren't right. And so, so something like that, like, no, you, you, it, you're not doing the wrong thing by by. By doing it right, yeah, you, you're not and a cast member's not going to come in and be like, uh, you're not supposed to be in here. Yeah, it's, it's ex- just, <laughs> I mean, everything you're not supposed to be in says crew only, right? Yeah, I right. mean, so it's very exploratory, it's very make of it what you want. Mm-hmm. We also had a panel in our bedroom that had a droid that would talk to us and also prompt us to do further missions. Uh, it was See, actors ours by our magic us, fan. ours never prompted us to do missions. Oh, ours was well, like, did you talk to mm-hmm. it? Yeah, but but yes, okay. we did. Well, see, it was different. Ours was had to do with Smuggler's Run, the the ride in Batu. So, and we actually got a, our own special message, but it was all it was all Magic Band activated, so right. it remembered. And she was a very sweet droid. At night, she would either tell you a story 
or sing you a lullaby. And we did both. And they were very nice. <laughs> it um, was a very nice droid. <laughs> well, we didn't get either of that at night, but it's cool. I mean, listen, well, everyone... <laughs> no, your serenade was from Greg or Dan, right? So, <laughs> also, one of the quotes of the trip was, we were all like going through our personal checklist before we went to Batu. Like, do we have the keys? Do we have the magic bands? Do we have backpack sanitizer? sunglasses and greg's like oh shit i need to go get my sunglasses and he pauses and turns and says wait are aviators considered canon and, <laughs> and it was just like it was we were so good. in the story that we were concerned that our aviators were not canon so it, <laughs> it was, was just it was really fun yeah our friend leslie uh who was on the on the ship with us she was an ewok <laughs> the entire time yeah so, but she and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, one of the things that uh, people also were starting to say on the forums as I was reading them is, you know, we went into this thinking that, you know, we needed a lot of costume changes. Yeah. And the thing people started saying was, no, stick to the same costume or only do like one costume per, per day. day. Yeah. Uh, Which I did. Because I had a look. Characters... I had three different looks. <laughs> well, no, you did. You did a good job, though. Yeah, you did a good job. So, um, but, uh, but Leslie was the same and it helped her. She was well did. known by everybody. She was called out by everybody. Cause she was the only Ewok on board. <laughs> she <Yeah>. was. <laughs> yeah. And, and, that, and, no, and you're, you're 100% correct. And that's where it's like, because you have to remember these actors are only have two days with you. I mean, if you want to really call it like a day and a half, because that second half is like things are wrapping up, but like right. a day and a half with you to not only try to remember your name, and for some folks, they, all of us included, we had creative names that, that went along with where we were at. Um, so not only are they, tr- are they trying to remember a unique name, mm-hmm. but also trying to put it with a person. And so if you're changing your aesthetic so much right. or so often. They're not going to um, remember you. And, yeah. it, well, well, number one. And then number two, if you're not engaging with them enough, right. like, you know, t- for them to remember you outside of that, then then you're could be doing yourself a disservice. Right. And so like Leslie, she being, uh, you know, in her Ewok costume, again, very easy to remember. And um, she was, you know, kind of giving Lieutenant Croy a hard time throughout the entire thing because he's a bad guy. And he guy. ended up calling her, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, because she, <laughs> she said to him, she's like, oh, no, no, no. And so that's what he called her for the entire rest of the Yeah, I think, yeah. He, he think he turned around and goes, oh, so that's your name? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that's what he called her. In performances in the atrium, he, she said, she shouted out something to him and he turned down and looked at her from the, up on the second level and was like, I don't need to hear from you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. During the main show, it was and, so fun. And that's the thing. That goes back to what I said earlier, is that if you can can make yourself, you know, interact and be memorable, once again, as, they're, as these group things are going on and they need to interact with you or they want to interact, you've given them something to be memorable to, to respond to. Yep. Yep. And I would say the biggest hit for me was that grand finale show. It, and it was literally a show. It went on for like 30 minutes. Um, the story all came together. Everything, all of our paths, all of the things that we were watching, all of the interruptions, the, the all of it came to a grand finale and it wrapped up seamlessly. And we had, again, spoilers, we had an actual lightsaber duel between Kylo Ren and Rey where at one point a piece of the ceiling fell like it separated like as if you know i don't know if kylo sent did tried to break bring it down or something and ray stopped it with the force and it was just hanging there it was all part of the show all in that atrium and you'd never know that all of those special effects of like blaster sparks going off and yep. you know their lightsabers hitting the railing and, and it was sparking skip. and, and, yeah, and destroying like, the railing right in front of you yeah yeah and the best part which, you know, we weren't allowed up on this balcony area where this show was taking place. There had to have been like a treadmill or something because Ray lost her lightsaber. Kylo Ren reached out with the force and pulled her towards him. And she, she like moved yeah. flawlessly. Yeah. On yeah. Some her, sort her legs of... weren't moving, but she was moving. Yeah. She, yeah. she was like frozen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, but moving towards him, just like the force. She was on, a, she was on an intergalactic bow flex, basically. <laughs> yeah. <but. laughs> it was, it was really cool. And but it was honestly, very cool. the best part was when Sammy 
one of the characters who we thought, you know, the, his storyline, you thought he was kind of working for the First Order, but he was like this shy, you know, kind of humble, doing whatever the First Order asked for. He ended up ripping off his helmet. He was a stormtrooper undercover and like saved the day. And it was everybody cheered. And it was this whole atrium cheering for Sammy. And, and I was like, oh, my God, I wasn't expecting that. It was it was so well done. Yeah, really great. And then, of course, one of the best effects, which people were so excited about seeing, was an actual working lightsaber. Like where yes. when she actually pressed the button, the lightsaber yep. kind of like just came out of the hill. Yeah. Yes. And it was such a cool effect. And it was so neat to see in person. They've got a little work to do on the transition to it's, <laughs> it's, the actual yeah, lightsaber. Work in progress. But, um, I, they'll get it. They'll get there. But... Damn, that Ray and Kylo Ren thing was, I was in it. It was just yeah. like, wow, I'm like in it. And, you know, I felt like such a nerd, but I was in my element. So, <laughs> so well, my question is, was after that the concert with the guy who played the guitar and singing the song? Was oh, that we had a Marillion? Yes. Sandro. Sandro. Or Sandra. What was his name? Sandra. Sandra. We yeah. called him Sandra, but his name was Sandra. Sandra. But <laughs> he was actually a Marillion. Um, so that was nice to see one of their species on board, but he was, he was wonderful. It was so cool because we, we literally had like, we were holding court at this, this table in the, in the lounge really the whole time. Up. And we really were. And we were. he came over with, who was the, um, the, the Rodian. The Rodian. Rodian. They came yep. over, sat down and he was essentially trying to write a song that he was going to be performing later that evening. And you know, he was like talking about it and then, you know, asking for, you know, kind of some input. And I was sort of singing a little riffs here and there. Greg had thrown out some words and like we kind of all put it together. And and it was cool because it ended up in the final song that he sang later yeah, that he night. he sang it after the big finale. It was really cool. <laughs> for, for me, for me, I will say it was such a hard come down after the final performance because it was sort of that you know it's over and mm -hmm. it's it's not even the fact that it's over but it was really like a hard stop there was no other oh. interaction there was no other data pad stuff yeah. there was it was done and that's where and i, I want to talk about this yeah go I, for I, it. I want to talk i want to go over this because it was the biggest miss for me was how hard of a stop you got to go i i mean it was <laughs> the next morning like they couldn't get us out fast enough but to to their credit, they had to turn over that entire ship to get a whole new set of people on later that afternoon. But little things matter. Like our screen in the bedroom was no longer in space. They didn't show us docking on planet. They didn't show us any stars. It was just a black screen. And it was right. like, who oh, turned it well, off? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and maybe it was a mistake or, but it, I mean, it was like, they didn't seamlessly send us on our way. I felt it was too hard. That's something I wanted to ask the forums because the only thing that, that, that surprises me with that is that they spent so much time trying to make you feel immersed in this environment. Why would you then turn off the display yeah. at the very end? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're going to do that, like, you know, don't even do it, number one. Just, just have it be a static image, though, of, hey, we're docked next to the ship yeah. that's going to take you back to Earth. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not hard to fix that part, you know. Also, there was some confusion on when we had to put our luggage out so they could take it back to valet and get it yes. ready for at our cars. So that kind of created some chaos on the way out. Like, do we have time? Do we not have time? Do we have to bring it to breakfast with us? Like, what do we have to do with this? So I would I would fix that or at least be a little clearer and maybe a few data pad, like, thank you for joining us. You know, see you on your way. You know, and I think one of the phrases they used was "May the stars light your way." But like, yeah. we didn't get any send off. It was kind of just like, "That's it." Yeah, it, it, and and you know, Leanne, you absolutely hit the nail on the head. And because of the fact, like that, I'm not going to repeat anything you said. That plus, for example, like Lieutenant Croy was was um, was my guy, right? And and you know, the First Order was not the 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 um, the hero at the end of the day. But I had zero chance to just say thank you to him for making mm -hmm. it such a great experience for me. Mm -hmm. And I get it because it's not cohesive with the story, but there was no... They literally hauled the First Order people off the ship, so to speak. Yeah. Like they I mean, were but, thrown out. Exactly. But I would have liked an option to receive a survey that said, hey, 
Is there anybody from your experience that you would you would like to say something to? Because I would have. I would have said, hey, Lieutenant Croy, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, and so so all of that. And like, I understand it needs to end at some point. But but to Leanne's point, it was so harsh that like, it would have been nice to have some sort of trickle over in the morning, like, like Gaia or like, like other people being around and just, you know, just kind of having that send off and, you know, thank you for your journey. And, you know, you were all brave and, you know, blah, blah, mm-hmm. you'll, we'll always remember you. It was just very, it was very just, just abrupt. I'll just and, say and that. I, I think that it's probably just one of those issues where it's their schedules. Like the I real get it. Yeah. Yeah. Schedule. Totally. Because, yeah. Cause if you think about it, you start your day, the first day, like in yeah. the afternoon into the evening. So, and then the second day, no one's around because you're going to bed too. So you then come back from bed too and the story begins again on the ship in the afternoon sure. to evening. So that's their schedule. It's at, at, late afternoon to evening, agreed, late afternoon agreed. to evening. And, so they wouldn't be able to come back in the morning and be there. But, well, it could have been, that you're, you're, I 100% agree with you. They could have done something where they had a pre-record or they had a recorded message playing in the atrium that said, yeah. you know, um, uh, you know, our captain is fast asleep in her cabin. She was up late, you know, helping the engineers in the, in the maintenance room. Um, but you know, go ahead and, um, you know, he, here, here's, here's a message she wanted to make sure you all saw before you disembark, yeah. Boop. you know, something, something, something small like that to help bridge the gap. And going back to your Lieutenant Croy thing, not being able to say goodbye. I think one way that they could solve that is just like put him in the brig. <laughs> That's it, yeah. And you go down and be like, bye. He's, like, he's in jail, but you can be up. I was like, we're so sorry. You know, you could, yeah. You, you could no, no, so- agree. No, no, that, that's actually a great idea. I mean, because he was really, he was really the, well, I mean, I guess they all kind of did, but he was, he was really a hard stop. Like, you weren't seeing yeah. him again, and you did. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and everybody like, else, like, it was so nice, you know, that, you know, the other characters were there, and you could actually, like, give them a hug goodbye. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I put a fake cigarette butt with the cruise director on the floor. Like, <laughs> Boom. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know, they were friends by the end of this, in yeah. a way, you know. And so it was a shame that we didn't get to say goodbye to Lieutenant Croy. But it, there's just a few things they could easily fix, like that screen in the bedroom. Or provide a message from somebody. Or put him in the brig and you send your regards, you know. Yeah. Easy fixes. And not only that, we, because Christine is amazing, she was able to secure us a professional photo shoot. Yes. Which was oh, an yes. extra cost that she she got us. That is a hit. And that it is, is a major hit. That of, like it was like that was now I think out of everything that we spent on that ship, that was the best money. Well, because that's what you walk away with is the yeah. memory. Like you yeah. have your you, like that is what you have, and that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna give the plug and say if you're going to do it. Do it because at the end of the yes. day, I don't know how much that picture it was, package was. It was only a hundred dollars. Okay, so perfect. If you're going to spend, well worth it. If you're going to spend three thousand dollars on this cruise, what is the difference between three thousand or three thousand one hundred? Like, yeah. like at the end yeah. of the day, and to get, I mean, really great, fantastic. I mean, some of the some of the photo pass shots that you get at Disney, I mean, they're good quality, but like this is like. You know, hiring like a wedding photographer. <laughs> it wasn't no, no, a wedding. It, it was. It 100% <laughs> it, you know, was. That, that's such good quality. And he, they knew what they were doing. The and, lighting, the yeah. positioning, the, the perspective the, of the shots. The variety of the locations. And that's where, to your point, Derek, it's not a Disney photo pass where it's like, okay, stand on this mark. Snap, snap. Thanks. Bye. It was, yeah. where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Yep. Who's in the photo? And and you know what was what I was impressed with was the photographer took a few little minutes to get to know the dynamic of the group and how people know what right and it was it came down to essentially Derek being the glue right I mean everybody's connection was through Derek and so yes. one of the photos in the atrium is literally surrounded by Derek being in the middle I I'm next to him obviously as his husband and holding hands and then everybody else kind of fans out from there but just that little key. Knowing that mm-hmm. Derek's the glue, and he wanted to make sure that you were the center right. of that, it, it, I just think to your point, very much in alignment with what you get from a wedding photographer or any special event photographer. Yeah, because everybody that saw our photos mm-hmm. after we posted them, like, oh my god, these are amazing. One hundred percent, a must do if you have the experience. And our photographer, he 
I literally said I was dressed as a Jedi inspired outfit and I had Leia's lightsaber. And I said, all I want to do is this with this lightsaber. Like, this is my idea. He took that, ran with it and made it so much more than I could have ever imagined because he had the creative part of him running with all of us, you know, with Dan and Greg's photos, with you and uh, Derek and Corey, you together, um, you know, Leslie's personal request. He had, he had, he had, um, Christine, like fan my cape out like bitch like i was coming in for a landing somewhere like, <laughs> like you know and, a beyonce fan somewhere yeah, in that, in know, that <laughs> bridge <laughs> exactly and that's what i would say too is that it's good to come in with ideas and have have a direction but let the photographer do what they do best and be creative yeah. right unless oh, yeah. unless you are beyond specific about like I want to be holding the um, the throttle in the bridge like but but otherwise as long as you have a general idea um, because I think the worst thing to do in any case when working with an artist is just to say, I don't know, whatever you think is best, right? Because while yes, right. they can do that, but if you have, if you can meet halfway with some ideas, it makes it way much better. Yeah. And one thing I was going to say, cause you're mentioning locations of where you can go on the ship. This is another major pro tip for the photo. If you're going to book this photo session, one of the best time frames to book it, if you can, is uh, I would say between two and three, maybe even a little bit earlier, because there's nothing else going on at the ship on the ship, and so you can get access to all of these rooms. Oh, it's the, like between two and three on the second day, I should say. So you know, you can be on the bridge, you can go into the engineering room. There's not active things going on. When in there was that. ours? It was two thirty. Oh wow! Yeah. See, it seems yeah, there was to me nobody in the atrium, nobody, nobody, nobody in the bridge. Right. Yeah, I mean, nothing. if you look at all of our photos, nothing was photoshopped because there was literally nobody there. But it's funny. So, so going back to what we said before, like Derek just said, it was two thirty, three o'clock. That to me seemed like it was like eight p.m. Oh, yeah. I know. It did not seem like oh, it was two o'clock. Like, yeah. but again, I was, it was warped on that thing. <laughs> I know it was. It really was. But yeah, it, it, that's a, a really great time to do it because it's it's. You know, you have access to pretty much every single area with hardly anybody there. And they're they're all on Batu, still doing their thing or yep. in their rooms. There's nothing going on actively on the ship with characters or missions. And so mm-hmm. I felt like that that was we just happened to randomly pick that. And um, then I saw on the forums that, oh, this is a good time to go. I was like, perfect. It's like we've yep. got it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was overall really amazing. What was your favorite experience? If you had to put it down to one. I know it's really tough. I'm going to be a little bit uh, sentimental here and I'm just going to say, please. I think my favorite thing was getting to experience it with all of you. We have been talking about this for so long I know. I know. and we, you know, are all star Wars fans one at one level or another and, um, and just getting to all finally come together. Some of us met for the first time and that, you know, you got to meet Dan and Greg for the very first time for a long time. We've been talking about, you need to meet them. And so it was, yes. it was so cool to like have everybody there and get to share this experience. And I, and that's a memory that I will always have forever. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't say it any better than that. Honestly. I mean, the experience is, And the storylines and everything were really great. It felt like I was in Star Wars, which is exactly what I wanted out of my little dress up for two and a half, three days, right? (laughs) But (laughs) it wouldn't have been worth it without my friends there. And so, you know, and even I have to say, it really sucked not having Lauren there, but we included her as much as we could. We did. With videos and pictures. And I just sent her her gifts. So... Oh, she good. got those for her birthday. Coming oh. up. And, yep. And, but like to do, Derek, you and I have been through so many things, like, and we've done so many large things like Comic-Con, right? And this was another one of those large things. I remember leaving you at the airport that day when I had to leave. It was terrible. I was crying. It was whatever. I always cry. But I said, we did it. We did it again. And it like, it was the experience to share with you. And Corey, you and I had a moment. The second night in the room. We did, girl. I won't forget it. It was it, it was one of those things like we're all doing these storylines. We're all doing this. But then when we came together, it was something we all shared. So and you it, ju- that you, made it worth it. You just said my favorite part was the storylines were fun. But what I didn't like about it is that I wasn't with all of you, right? I mean, we were on the same ship. Great. But my favorite part was when we weren't doing missions and we were together together. 
exchanging mm-hmm. what had just happened and my experience and your experience and, and watching Leanne, like watching you light up because you, ex- you talk to so-and-so, right. And watching yeah. you do this. And like, you know, that to me was the best part was pulling everybody back together. Cause to your point, that's kind of, that was the, that was the intent, right. For us to go on this, yeah. this, this journey together and experience it together. So to hear everyone's stories around the table was, was great. Yeah. And it's such yeah. a unique experience. Cause like where, <laughs> where else would you get to do this totally immersive, you know, Seriously. experience that is a, a something that you love, that you absolutely love and want to be a part of. And we got to do it. And, and unlike and, anything yeah. else that's out there. No, really. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's some questions about whether or not how long this can last in terms of, you know, will people be able to you know, want to go back or are they going to be able to continue to fill up this ship? Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we all said at the end of it, even with the expensive price tag that came with it, you know, we all said that we would want to do it again. Yeah. And, um, you know, who knows what Disney has planned? I'm sure they have plans for like changing I'm the sure. storyline at some point, you know, what they need to do to make yeah. sure that it keeps fresh and new ideas. But um, I really think it's going to be a thing that's going to want that people are going to be drawn back into and want to go again. Yeah. And, and, you know, if they can afford it, you know, you, you shouldn't have to go into debt to experience something like this. But, you know, it's it's one of those experiences that if you can save up and do it, um, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. And I don't remember who I heard say this once, but it was kind of one of those things of, you know, like go out there, live your life enjoy it, the money will come back. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so it's kind of one of those things like, yeah, this was, this was on the pricier side, but, um, I don't regret it one bit and I would do it again. Um, I said I would do it again, but I want there to be enough time to have lapsed that it's not so fresh that I remember a lot. I mean, of course there's going to be the big key things that I remember, but like, I want I want there to have been enough time to have lapsed, and maybe maybe they maybe they enhance things, right? Maybe there is some changes. Maybe there's you know X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would have to think. I mean, we're asking these questions right now. I'm sure in the planning phase of this mm-hmm. very expensive, <laughs> you know, experience that they were asking themselves the same. So there probably sure. is some type of plan that we may not you know, know about. Sure. And maybe they're just you know, gonna see how uh, much this continues to draw people. I think it's gonna be very popular for the next you know, few years, especially for the people that sure. wanna experience it. Um, and then we'll just see where it goes from there. But I, I, I'm just so excited for not only you know, what this experience means just for Star Wars, but what it could potentially mean for other franchises in the future, you know, whether Universal then wants to bring a Harry Potter hotel into the mix, um, you know, go to Hogwarts, you know, it, it, I think it, I think if it is successful, I think it's going to be replicated through other fandoms. And I am excited 100%. to see where that goes. Because it's not a hard concept. I mean, I think the hardest part about all of it is the storyline piece and the the data pad and making it inter, inter, so integral, integrated, um, intuitive. And at the end of the day, when we all sat around and talked about stuff, none of us said, oh, that conflicts with what my story said or blah, blah, blah. Like it was very, very well done from a storyline perspective, mm-hmm. um, both in what we were fed from the data pad and then also what was executed in front of us by the live people as well yeah it was amazing what can i say i cried several times (laughs) so that's always a good sign if you're traveling with me so (laughs) i'm glad i got to do it with you i I mean the entire group yeah so it wouldn't have been the same without leslie christine dan greg if you're all listening and i hope you are thank you for making it an amazing experience with myself derek and Corey. i would i think we all agree it was we had a damn good group and we represented. We people did. thought we were players at Batu. Like yeah, they thought we out. were part of this. <laughs> like, um, damn. That is my second favorite thing is that so um, a father came up to Greg, Dan, and I and asked if his daughter could take a picture with us, right? And it was like, yeah, that she was. She was like a tiny little Ray. Yeah, it was, it was cute. So, so cute. cute. I mean, that was one of those things I was like, absolutely. Like, this thing is from Amazon. Like, I'd be happy to take a photo with you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you look fabulous. We all did. We represented. Yeah, I'd we say did. we did. We, we did. We did. Good job. 
We did. We did it. So on that note, I guess I'll say Yakola Atima. Atima Yakola. <laughs> what is it? Atima Yakola. Atima Yakola. Atima Yakola. Oh boy, he needs, he needs more than a cola. <laughs> 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 and of course, uh, tabuite, which is cheers. So I think, I think we did it right, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Yep. My ill-mannered cat is ruining this send-off here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, "Yeah, you did it right." He's saying tabuite. Tabuite. <laughs> <laughs> so next week is the very last episode that Lauren and I will have for you before the Kenobi series premieres. So we are talking all things badass Kenobi. Next week's episode will be our top five favorite badass moments from Kenobi himself. And we're going to get hyped because after that, it's on. So join us. And thank you again for joining us here on the Most Things Kenobi podcast. If you'd like to support us, you can now do so on Patreon. So head on over there. And as always, you can follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. And if you enjoy our podcast, feel free to rate us on Spotify and Apple. And if you don't know where to go to do any of this, just head on over to mostthingskenobi.com. So, until next time, may the fierce be with you. Always. Always.